All right. Good morning, everybody. Let's go ahead and get started. Let me know if you guys can hear my audio and see my screen in the chat box. Just give me a little why or a yes there. Just let me know that it is working. Hope everybody's having a fantastic morning so far. Hopefully your trading's been going well. I'm looking forward to ending the week really awesome with the bankers close. So let's go ahead and jump into this. Um, as always, I need to remind you guys about the risks involved in this market. You can lose all or more than your initial investment if you're not careful. So please be aware of how many pips you're risking on each trade in addition to how big your lot size is and ultimately how that would affect your account if you were to lose money. Okay, awesome guys. So let's check the news. I know there was some dollar news this morning, but I don't believe there was anything else that I'm aware of. Um, and we don't typically trade the dollar for the London close specifically. So we should be gold in there. Um, so yeah, that's great. Let me pull up um, this. Let's look at the Euro pound, Euro franc on a five minute. It looks like we are coming into some zones here. Um, yeah, Euro franc is pulling down, pulling into a zone. Okay, how about the Euro pound? Also pulling into a zone. Okay, so I might wanna grab these real quick. Let me switch over. Let me switch to do, 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 do. need to switch to the Euro pound five minute. Okay, actually that one's not quite there yet. Maybe I will. Um, no, perfect. Let's, let's go to do, do, do. about the euro franc that's the other one i said uh, I, I don't know i i just don't like the way the euro franc looks recently last couple of days it's not have the, had the setup that i like to see um you know i might actually just be patient um well let's see let me go back to trading view because it's just so hard to read the charts on on mt4 but Okay, so this is, okay, so you got some demand zones down here and obviously down here, those are on the hourly time frame. We're on the five minute. Um, and technically it is coming into a zone right here at the end of the trading day and there's no news. Yeah, okay, so I, I, feel, like, I feel like I'm gonna be fine to jump into this. I'm gonna grab a couple of orders on the Euro pound and these are long positions and I've got one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to start with five and then I'm going to work my way into this trade and we'll draw out those zones again for everybody to see, but this is going to be a good trade. Um, let's see here. Okay. So, and actually I want to see if I can separate these symbols. Okay. Okay, so this looks good. Um, and then let's let's just go back to trading view to draw out our um, zones here. So so you want to when you're trading the bankers close, um, you want to have an idea of how far the market may go against you um, because you know obviously we're looking for a counter trend move. And so we want to know like, oh, hey, how far is this going to go, right? So um, when I'm looking at this here, let me come over here. The last time the market was over here was basically this, right? And so this is a supply demand area right here. And I'm going to explain why this is supply demand. So basically, this is the last thing this, these couple of bear candles right here, these were the last things that created um, this breakout of this resistance. And you can see it's a pretty strong resistance level. Market came up here and touched, touched right here. It did break right there, but then came back in. But um, the markets used this area as support and resistance in the past. And that's important, right? Okay. And then this so that was the last subsequent break so the market's sitting in that right now and you can see the market dipped into it on just on tuesday and then shot up 
and now we're back to it again. And so that's why I feel comfortable executing a buy order right now, a long position, because you know when the market's generally in this area, we usually get some help from the banks. And then lastly, the other reason why I like this is if you go to the higher time frame, like the hourly, this area right here is a supply, or excuse me, not supply. This is demand on an hourly time frame, right? So you come over here, you know this whatever this was right here, whatever the market was doing here, created this breakout of this resistance, um, which is the same resistance I actually drew out, ironically and funny enough, which is awesome. And the market broke out of it and it's whatever happened right here. And so, and that one's on an hourly time frame. So now that we have that hourly top down perspective, we come down to the lower time frame, and we can feel a little more confident taking the trade. In addition to this, we have, there's no news. We check the news. That's part of our routine every morning when we're trading the banker's close. And we don't have any news associated with the euro or the pound, which is awesome. Um, so the chance of some kind of abnormal move is not as likely because we don't have any news. Um, and just as a reminder, news can be created at any moment during the day. Something could happen, but, and we always have to be prepared for that. But nonetheless, um, we should be good to just execute that order. Um, and I've just taken those trades over here and, you know, I'm up 10 bucks, you know, barely anything on each one of those trades. Um, and what I'm going to do, yeah. And actually I need to take this trade on the other account as well. Let me go ahead and um, I've got a couple of trades I need to close out over here. Let me grab grab that trade on this account real quick. I'm just managing multiple accounts right now and so have to be kind of present. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and add, um, I'm just gonna do my starter position on this one, the Euro pound. Okay, and then again, um, I can't really see the supply demand area on the five minute on this chart. So I'm gonna go to a 15 and here it is. So yeah, like I said, this is, there's a lot of um, demand in this general area. Um, there's actually also a lot of demand right here and there's even some right in here. Um, and so, yeah, if the market came even lower, I, I, I f I'd feel pretty good about buy it into this um, and then expecting some kind of move back up by the end of the day. Um, okay, so I've got a starter position. Let's see, how many how many trades do I have on? Um, honestly, I'm gonna add a, one or two more. I'd like to make some money today, all right? Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is scale in um, as well, because we're going to go on autopilot here in just a moment. Like I'm going to put a lot of these trades on autopilot as we are um, going to talk about some of our swing trades from last night. And so I'm just going to be buying in this general area right here. There's a lot of, again, I feel confident buying down here because there's a lot of demand that this market would have to break through at the end of the trading day. That would be very difficult for the market to do that. Um, like how, how in the world is it going to break through all of these demand areas without any news to kind of bolster it? And, um, you know, it's Friday, no news, um, demand area, that's why, you know, that's enough for me to feel like, okay, yeah, I'm going to get a move that I want today. Um, it may, and again, it may not happen in the hour. Like we may not get the move we're hoping for in this hour, but nonetheless, we will get the move. We will get a move that we want at some point today. Now, where would I target all of these trades? Where would I want to take profit? Most of these we should be clocking out of around the mid Bollinger band, which is around this area right here. So I'm going to be looking for a lot of targets around there. 
sure, we can leave a few on beyond that. But yeah, we do need to take quite a few profits in that area. So I'm just going to bring these in just a little bit. That's fine for now. Okay. And we should be good to just let this trade sit and do its thing. Like we really should be good to, to go. Um, and so I'm going to switch back over to some of the trades that we took last night and the other nights. So I had one trade actually close out for a loss last night and it wasn't really fun. Like I did lose $1,600 on my Aussie cat trade. Um, and it looks like the market just wanted to break past that old resistance level. We'll talk about that one. I do have some other trades that are up a lot. You know, I do have, you know, I have $1,500 on my Euro dollar trade that I took last night. I have um, Pound Aussie is up $400. Obviously, our bankers closed trades are doing just fine, up about $30 a piece. And then I'm down $30, $40 on the Euro CAD. And then I do, I am down about $900, almost a thousand on the CAD franc. And so we'll talk about that one too. Um, I want to cover the the um, Euro CAD and Pound and Aussie CAD first, real quickly. So let's let's go to those on the um, let's go to this. So this was a whole um, supply area, and I I should have been better at this, but it's okay. So basically, um, this is a selling area, and the market still may come down from this. We'll see. I don't know if I want to re-enter though. I'm just looking to take better trades at this point. So if you go back to an hourly chart, you can see if you go back over here um why this is a supply area right this was the last thing the market did um this consolidation before this huge break to the downside okay and so you know thus that's that's a supply area now this this area has been tapped into a couple of times like if you fast forward on this market um we tapped into it the first time Let's see, you have to go a little bit further. I guess it's more recent. Here we go. We almost tapped into it right there and then the market pulled back. Um, and then the next time we tapped in, one of the things I should have paid more attention to, and this is my bad, um, and obviously I'm having to pay for it, but one of the things that I think we could have done better on this trade is when the market comes up and hangs out where supply, supply is and it's not rejected, if the market doesn't reject like it did over here, this is a rejection, okay? That's a good trade, right? Like you can feel comfortable taking that short right there. But if the market comes up to here and just says, oh, we're going to touch it, come back, back a little, touch it, hang out a little bit, and just kind of stay up here, that's not a good sign for the market to come down. It means it's actually building up to try to break above that. And I should have been more aware of that. And that's my fault. Um, and yeah, anyway, so, and then the other trade is similar to that one. It's the EuroCAD. Um, no, this one's actually doing fine. We're, I think we're either positive or hanging on just fine. This one has touched it three or four different times. Each time it's been rejected, um, which is a good thing, right? Now, if this market were to come up again and just hang out like the Aussie CAD did, we should probably close the trade for a break even, a little profit, or even a small loss. Like that should be the uh, decision to be made if that were to happen again. Now, this one is looking a lot better than the Aussie CAD. So we still have a pretty good shot at winning on this trade because it is just holding, and not, not holding, it is rejecting this level every time it comes up to it. Um, so we know we've got a good supply area up here. And again, if you just scroll on your chart, you can see what is that supply. Oh, it's this thing right here. Whatever this was, um, uh, was the last thing the market created, um, last consolidation before this market just broke support and just went down for a long time right so this area we know is working out so far so i'm going to stay in that trade let that one do its thing um oops 
Here we go. There it is. Yeah, that, that this one could do just fine. We'll just let that one sit. Um, I'm sure we're fairly positive on that one now. Oh, I guess I'm only up. I'm only up forty dollars on that trade right now. But okay, the Cav Frank is another story. That one is down quite a bit. Um, let's talk about that one. I'm talking about all the losers first, right? And then we'll talk about the winners. Um, Cad Frank. Okay, so we talked about this one um, the other day. Cad Frank has been coming down quite a bit on this hourly time frame. Like for a long time, it's been coming down. Now it's been tapping into all sorts of um, demand down here. And it most recently tapped into this, basically got within a pip or two of this last demand zone and it's starting to come back up. So I'm feeling pretty good about this one. Um, I don't like the fact that it was able to come pretty deep into a lot of these, but nonetheless, it's totally possible for the market to do that. Um, it is starting to respect this level down here. I do believe that this is going to last quite a while, um, like this move to the upside that's coming because you know, even in this process to the downside, um, there has been some pretty significant moves back up. Like this one was 85 pips. Um, this move was almost 90, right? This one right here was smaller, but still it, it moved 60 pips, right? And none of those had quite the demand that we're sitting in right now. None of those had demand like, like this one. So the fact that we're coming in here and we know that the market historically has been able to make 90 pip moves to the upside when there hasn't been demand like the demand we're touching right now, I, I would say 90 pips should be your minimum. So you'd be looking at a move that could go all the way you know, to there. Um, so obviously I'm going to stay in this trade. I think we're in a good spot. Um, I really think we're in a good spot on this trade. This one's going to mature and make us quite a bit of money in my opinion. So um, I know we are down right now on the trade uh, for good reason. Obviously it's pulling pulled into a lot of these demand zones, but it is very, very comforting to see the market touch this demand area or get pretty close to it and then immediately get rejected off of it. Um, and let's go back and see which demand area that is. I'm just curious to see if we come back over here why is the market rejecting off of that level so well? Oh, you have to go to a two hour because it's so long ago. Yeah, here, here it is. So this is the demand area that this market was like, that, that wanted to bounce off this morning. So you can see here, whatever these little bear candlesticks were the last little bear candlestick slash consolidation that created this breakout, this massive, move to the upside here um, that ultimately broke this resistance level right here. There's a lot of resistance and then the market broke above that. Now there were some other demand areas like this that counted market broke past that one. Uh, this is another um, area, right? Here. Let's see, which one is this one counting? I think it's further this direction. That's okay. But yeah, pretty much the market broke through all of these different demand areas, except this one down here. It really just, it, it hit this and was like, okay, I'm going up. I'm going to go up from there. And so, I, yeah, I do think we can get a pretty good little trade out of this. Um, looks like the market hit it this time um, back in 2020 as well, it tapped into it and then just shot up. Um, and so I do think we're going to see this um, go up from here. Uh, and it already has. Um, it was down a lot worse earlier, um, but I'm looking forward to it. Let me fast forward. Here it is. Here's where we are. I don't usually like to hop in front of the train like this, but I really think we have a good reason to be in front of it this time. I really do. So especially now that we've had a little confirmation behind it, you know, it hit it, wicked up, and now is starting to push up from here. I can only see that trade improving at this point. Um, now, what would be grounds to get out of this trade? Well, let's say it came back to that area, retested, and it just stayed in that area, kind of like the Aussie CAD did. Um, 
you know, we need to, you know, bite the bullet and get out of that trade. And that's what I, and again, I should have done that on the Aussie CAD. That's my bad. If this one starts to react that way, we'll do the same thing. But so far it is rejecting off of it. So you want to stay in the trade. Um, and I do look forward to it because based off of what we've seen in the past, a 90 pip move to the upside is, is very likely, you know, something like that. 80 would be right here. Um, 90, 100 pips would be 115 would be like right there. Yeah, something, something in between here and here would be, I would say, where the market would go next. Um, so yeah, I definitely want to hang on to that one. All right, guys. So um, let's see here. Actually, it looks like our, your, our bankers closed trades. Yeah, it's come, come down a little bit. That's fine. Um, you know, it's just, you know, we'll just build into this position. No problem. We're just leaving it on that kind of autopilot scenario that we've got it on right now and let it do its thing. All right. Okay, so we got that one. EuroCAD we talked about, and that one's up now $100, which is awesome. CAD Frank, we got that one. We're going to leave that one, let it do its thing. Um, uh, Pound Aussie, this one's up 700 bucks. Let's talk about this one, and then we'll talk about our big trade, which is the Euro dollar. That one's up $1,600 right now, $1,700. Um, let's go to the Pound Aussie. Um, GA. So basically, this was a, a, a pretty strong uh, supply area, okay? And we can talk real quickly just as a reminder why that's a big supply area on the hourly chart. This one's super obvious, like super obvious. Look at this, okay? This consolidation before this massive breakout, right? And not only that, but that consolidation broke structure right so here's support right here and the market just blew past it from that last area just blew right past it so we know that that's pretty good supply and this market has um most recently you know hit up into it and it's you know um pushed push lower so yeah we're, we're in a good spot you know we're up Seven hundred, eight hundred dollars on this trade. Um, should we stay in it? That's the big question, right? I mean, it hit this um, demand area, or yeah, demand area, and it came up a little. Now it's back down again. Um, th this could be a real runner too, though. At the same time, so you know, part of me just wants to say, like, hey, let's see how far this can go. You know, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna let that one sit a little bit. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to close that out yet. I, I definitely want to let my tr winners run a little bit. Um, and then we've got this Euro dollar that's up quite a bit right now. Um, which actually I have a trade over here. I just realized I need to close out. This isn't a trade I took with you guys. It's a trade I took on my own last night and I need to close it out. Um, I bought the dollar yen right here last night. And obviously it's come up, but I need to close it out now. I'm up 53 pips. I was up a lot more earlier, but I need to close it. But real quickly, just for those that are curious, I want to show you why I bought right there. So on this dollar, in fact, it, my analysis was on the trading view. So let's go to trading view. And then I'll talk about the Euro dollar trade. So... We got a lot of stuff on here. I don't need this area anymore. I don't need this area. So I was looking to buy the dollar yen last night. I was looking to buy the dollar specifically. And on the five minute chart, I noticed um, um, that the next supply area or demand area below where the market was was right here. And I had to go back in the, in the charts to find where this was because this was created on Monday. So on Monday, this nice little consolidation was formed and, and then caused this breakout. Now, specifically, did it break any structure levels? It did, yeah. So this was a nice resistance area right here. And the market 
um, broke past that resistance after what had happened right here. So I had a pretty good idea that if the market were to tap into this area, there's a good chance we would get a move to the upside. And it did, right? It totally did. Um, we had um, a tapped in right there, went up a little bit, but then it tapped in right here. It almost hit my stop loss, you can see, but fortunately we had our stop just outside of that zone. And anyway, yeah, this, this was a great little trade um, to be in last night and ready to go. Um, and I just rode that guy up. I actually had some buys down here too, ready to go. I had some buys here and a buy here and a buy here. Um, and again, why would I do that? This dollar yen had so many supply or, or demand areas. Like right here, this was the last consolidation that that preceded this breakout of this resistance. So I knew that that was one. And then same thing with this guy. This is a pretty good one right here. Whatever this was, was the last order block before this resistance broke. So that's another good one. So anyway, I had a lot of trades. And what's cool about these guys is that these are highly probable trades with low stop losses, like small stop losses, which is super awesome. High rewards, big, um, low risk. Um, and so I placed one, a trade at each one. Fortunately, my first one just worked out. Like this first one just made its money. So I was done with that right away, which is super great. Um, anyway, that was a trade I took last night um, on the dollar yen. And then I have this trade on the euro dollar that I'm in right now, um, which we'll talk about. So let me go over to um, the euro dollar over here. Okay, so same same thing, right? Like this this one's more on an hourly time frame. So I was looking for swing trades, and this was what's so cool is like this is a trade that you guys were able, hopefully were able to take last night. If not, that's fine. We will get these out to you every day. Um, we'll get you new ones every day because they happen all day long on all time frames, on all pairs. It's just amazing. So um, another thing that you're going to see me do more often, guys, is I've been. I've been working with a lot of other traders. I've been trying to hone in on my trading skills and I'm going to try to focus on trading one or two pairs, maybe three pairs. Um, I've been trading a lot of different pairs, as you guys know. Um, and be, since this happens, this concept happens on all time frames and on all pairs, what I'm going to be doing is a lot more trades on just a couple of pairs. And I'm probably going to stick with like the Euro dollar or dollar yen. Um, Euro dollar for more like London, New York trades, and then dollar yen for more like evening trades that you don't have to be at the computer in the evening, but it's like trades you can set up and let them go in the evening type of thing. But trying to hone in on my skills a little bit more, and I'm trying to take more trades that um, uh, like try to stick with a couple of time frames, pick a couple of time frames to trade and pick a couple of pairs to trade, but try to, you know, just hone in on a couple of pairs, if that makes sense. Um, and I, and I do like the Euro dollar and the dollar yen, just because they're some of the most traded currencies out there. The opportunities are ample. The spreads are great. Um, so I'm going to try to stick with that. Um, but anyway, so you're going to, you're going to see a lot more. I mean, I might, if I see a really golden, opportunity on another pair, I might do that. One other thing too is um, if you're, I talked to some other traders um, um, who, who are pretty good at trading, like there's some fr friends of mine. And one of the conversations I had with them recently was if you get in the, in the habit of trading lots of currency pairs, um, one of the things that happens is when you win, you tend to win all your trades all at once. Like you have a really big day, but when you lose, you tend to lose all your trades all at once um, because a lot of currency pairs are just correlated in some way or another. And so when one currency hits a level, the other currency is hitting that level on its own market. And so 
again, if it, the trade works out, you can have five, six, 10 different trades all work out at the same time. But the opposite is also true. You can lose 10, five, six different trades all at the same time. So I'm working on my skills again. I'm trying to take better trades where um, we are just focusing on, you know, one pair, maybe two pairs, couple time frames, but not more than that. Um, because the opportunities are everywhere. And then what I'm also going to be doing is just taking bigger contract sizes on the few opportunities that I take. Um, part of that is, again, to avoid being correlated with so many different currency pairs. And then the other reason for doing that is, again, just to hone in on what I'm currently doing. So, um, but yeah, let's talk about, so, so when you get my signals, just realize there's going to be a lot of there's going to be a lot of the same, like you'll have a lot of Euro dollar opportunities, a lot of dollar yen opportunities. And maybe on occasion, you're going to see a lot more trades from, or a few trades from other pairs, but just know that that's going to be the expectation. Um, but yeah, so here's the Euro dollar on an hourly chart. Last night when I was trading this, the market was kind of like over here last night. Um, when I sent out the signal. And so it was kind of in the middle of some trading boxes. And I said, okay, so if this market comes down, um, where's the next buy block? And I was like, oh, it's totally like right here because this is the last bear candlestick before the market moved up. There's a lot of kind of um, um, consolidation here um, that created, and again, it's you're looking for not just like the last candlestick before the market moved up, you're specifically looking for um, a break of structure. So this would be a structure point right here. That's resistance. Okay, what caused the market to break resistance? Oh, whatever this was right here is what caused the market to break resistance, right? Um, same thing, this is a resistance area. What caused it? It's the same area that caused it. So I knew this was a good level to buy at if the market were to dip in here. And sure enough, it dipped in here just perfectly. Like a wick came in here, got me into the trade. And now we're just up on this right now. Um, we're doing pretty well. Like, oh my gosh, I'm up $2,600 now on this trade. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> like, just like that, we're already up quite a bit on this trade and it's just still going. Um, super awesome. Cannot complain, right? Um, and then I was also looking at, and I'm, by the way, where am I targeting on the, on this trade? I'm looking for a take profit. That's all the way up here. Um, and there's a good reason for that. And I'm sure you guys can guess that that's a supply area and it is, um, but that's the next area where I'm trying to go on this trade opportunity. Um, I was risking 1% on this trade. So like 1% of my account is $2,000. So um, if I were to lose this trade, I would lose $2,000. But if I win, here's what's cool about this opportunity. Um, I have a, here's my position. I got in right here or we got in. That's cool to say. We got in right there, right? Um, and I'm looking to get out right up here. And that is a 4.8 to 1 reward to risk ratio. And I really think we can get it. Like, I really think we can get this one. Um, which is exciting. It's going to take some time, but I really think we can get it. Um, so that means I'm basically trying to make 10 grand on this trade um, and I'm risking two grand to get it. And again, I think we can get it, which is super cool to stay, right? Like I have some pretty good confidence we can get that, get this done, especially because of what's already transpired. Like we've already triggered in, we're already up on the trade we're inching on $3,000 of profit already. And this thing has a lot more to go, um, which is awesome. So anyway, I'm excited. I'm excited for this trade. Um, I had another area. I had another buy. I posted this one as well last night down here. This was another supply area or demand area. Why did I like this one? It's because, again, last candlestick before the market moved up, but specifically, this was the, um, the, this was a support resistance area. The market broke out of it. How did it break out of it? Whatever happened here, right? And then if you come up, 
I guess you could say this is a spline man area, but that's kind of what this is all about, what we did over here. So um, fun fact, if you pull up, um, if you go to Sonar Lab, look at this. This was what was crazy last night, guys. When I was looking at this trade, I, I, I drew, I did my analysis exactly how you see it. This is my analysis of where the order blocks supply demand zones are. I was like, okay, now let's see where Sonar Lab says those levels are. I literally did this, boom. And it showed that there was an order block right here, exactly where I placed my block, right? And then I put one right here. And obviously you can see there's a green block right there from Sonar Lab. So that that's never happened to me ex like to the exact like where i've had it, order blocks overlap perfectly so i was like oh yeah we definitely have we definitely have a good level here i know we're doing a good job here with this um as far as this goes up here if you go to a higher time frame and do sonar lab i wonder if a higher time frame might show let's see it's saying mostly right here is where the order blocks are, which makes sense why it's pulled back. Let's see a three hour. There's a few up here, but let me show you why I have my target up here. Um, why I have my target right up here on this train. So if you come over on a one hour chart. Okay. This actually involve two different things. Whatever this is right here, coupled with this thing right here was the last thing that the market did before the market broke out of its support and resistance here. There's a little bit of support right here that the market broke out of. Um, and whatever, in fact, I should probably include like that whole area right there. So yeah, whatever was created here, is what created this massive breakout and subsequent break of structure, right? Like that support level, um, I guess this old resistance back here was broken from whatever the market created right here. So I believe this is another demand or supply area. So that would be a natural place to take profits on this trade that we're in right now. Let me get back over to it. Yeah, so when this thing goes back up and touches that area, we should close out of this trade and make our money. And it will be nearly five to one, five to one on that trade, which is super awesome. And there's another one up here too that we could target, but that I think that's pretty far away. So, um, so yeah, that's a really exciting trade, really fun um, setup. Um, it's about as perfect that's almost perfectly trading the Euro last night. Like that's fun to say, like out of all the traders in the world that are trading the Euro right now, like we traded it almost perfectly. Uh, like you can't do much better than what we did buying right there. You know, pretty, pretty exciting to see that. All right, guys, let's look at, um, let's see bankers close trade still hasn't come up yet. That's fine. Um, let me pull over to the um, Euro pound. Yeah, it hasn't really done much yet in terms of moving our favor and that's fine. It's gonna take some time today. There's no news. But we're kind of just in a waiting game. Like my worst trades down six, five, five or six pips right now. We're just kind of waiting for it to find, basically find its bottom here. And we know it should be pretty close because there's a lot of demand here, no news, end of trading day, you know, we should find a little bit of support somewhere in here. Um, it would be very shocking to see this market break this support level at this time of the day. Um, so I don't, I don't think that's in the future, but just be aware that anything's possible. I have my default stop loss in, so we should be fine, even if it did come down quite far. Okay, so um, so yeah, we you know we did a great job last night. Like we really did. I'm I'm kind of disappointed with some of these other trades. Um, 
that have not played out the way we wanted them to. Um, I think that's, that's just going to happen though. Um, and I think one of the things that's going to help is just focusing on fewer pairs. Um, having fewer things to focus on is going to be huge. So, you know, coming back over here, I'm just going to be focusing on, you know, the Euro dollar setups, looking for supply demand on the Euro dollar every day and every night. And then, and if I can't find one that's pretty good on an hourly time frame, which is my favorite time frame to trade, um, you know, I might go to a 15 minute or a five minute to find some shorter term opportunities. Um, and then lastly, I was going to say, um, the dollar yen is going to be kind of my secondary pair. Pr probably I like the dollar yen just because it's, it's, it's another very, very popular pair and it's going to give me that, that extra exposure to, um, the Sydney and Tokyo session. Um, and we did, I did well on that one last night. I know I didn't post this one, but you know, we did well, you know, buying right there, holding it till about here. That was a good little trade. Um, and again, you wouldn't have seen this on a five minute chart. You wouldn't have known on an hourly, you wouldn't have known why would the market stop right there. And it all had to do with, you know, Hey, if you're on that five minute, you know, why is this a good area to buy? Oh, you go back over here on the five minute a couple days ago come on let's go and you can see oh yeah there is a little something going on here right and then in terms of <clears throat> you know buy opportunity i guess this would have been maybe i should have stayed in that's okay i didn't see the five minute chart but yeah, it's kind of pulled into a kind of a supply demand area right here on a five minute. Yeah. I don't know if I, I'm not, I'm not trading the dollar yen right now though. In fact, I'm pretty much done trading for the day. I'm just, except I'm going to finish out the banker's close, try to make our money on the banker's close and be done for the day. Um, and then I'll re I'll just re go, I'll just restart next week. Um, this week was a little more rough for me. Um, last week was really awesome. Like I recapped last week. Um, if you guys remember, I made almost seventeen thousand dollars last week. It was just absolutely amazing. Um, this week's been a little more rough. I wonder if it's because we're getting closer to the holidays. That could be part of it. Um, and I've just had a couple of supply demand areas that didn't work with me. They weren't work like last week. It seemed like every single one of them just worked. Um, I've had a few this week, like you saw on that Aussie CAD, you know, I ended up losing on that guy, a couple of other losers, but um, anyway, we should move forward and it should, it should be good, but um, let's see what else I'm going to say. That's basically it. Just waiting for the euro pound to, you know, bankers close to, to play out here. Um, let me show you some scenarios of what this might look like again. In fact, we can recap our trade from yesterday. Cause I don't think we did that. Um, yeah, let's, we'll do, we'll recap that in just a second, but yeah, this will either go up right away. That's scenario one. It'll, or it'll come into this next box right there and then go up or it'll come up into this third box and then go up. And then the fourth option is it just goes straight to these stop losses. That one, I don't know how it would do that, but it could, right? We always have to be prepared. Um, I just don't know how it would do that considering where the market's been today and uh, no news and all that kind of stuff. So I do believe we have the market cornered because the amount of demand that's in this area, um, there, there's just no way the market would, in my opinion, there's just no way the market would come into this area at this time of the day. So 
anyway, that's why I feel like we have the market cornered. We just have to be patient and wait on this, this guy. My worst trade is down three pips now. And we're just, just in a waiting game. Just have to wait. Let's recap yesterday's bankers close trade. It was actually on this pair. I just don't like to, it's so much easier on trading view to recap. Um, so where was the market yesterday? Um, what's cool is I have this indicator called sessions. If you pull it up, it'll take you to all of the London sessions. So everything in green is a London session. So obviously we're almost done with today's London session. And then this was the trade yesterday. So we shorted, um, you know, we were in the last hour of trading, which is exactly how the bankers close works, right? We had the last hour starting right um, here. That's when the class started. Class technically ended um, right here at the, at, at the London close. Um, I think we pulled out some profits, but most of the profits we took later. And yeah, that, that was nice. That was over 16 pips, almost 17 pips of profit um, potential, right? Um, later that day, it did go up a little bit. You can see it kind of um, wandered its way back up and then it came back down later in the day as well. Um, but that's not part of the opportunity necessarily, right? The opportunity is right here at the last hour of the trading day. And sure enough, we had this nice move and it came down. And I was a little nervous. If you guys remember, I thought it was going to go up a little bit more. I thought it was going to come up to here or there was another level, I think like right up here. I thought the market was going to go up to one of these levels and then come down. So I was kind of planning and preparing for that. It never did, which is fine. Like we obviously made our money. Um, we made our money just selling right here. We didn't have to wait for it to go up first and then come down. Um, so that was the trade from yesterday um, to recap um, the bankers close. And then today, this is a similar setup. This time we're buying instead of selling. This is the beginning of the hour right here. We're at a low, we're breaking the lower Bollinger Band. I know here, if you pull it up, you can see it's touched it pretty close right here. Um, and it's just when the first signal appears, right? When you get the first signal to buy, then you go ahead and get in. Um, so now we're just waiting for this to finish off and there's what, just a few more minutes left or 10, 10 minutes left until the London market closes. Um, does that mean you have to be out of the trade in 10 minutes? No, just as a reminder, when you're trading the bankers close, you're entering into the trade in the hour, you can scale in in the hour, but after the hour's over, then you're just waiting for that market to finally curve back up in your favor, right? So you can definitely stay in the trade past the hour. I just wanna make that clear. In fact, we do a lot of the times, um, but it's not, not a requirement necessarily. So where is this going to come and stop? And again, we've already established this, you know, um, these are all supply demand areas right here. So even if it goes down a little bit further, it's just deepening. It's, it's just going deeper and deeper into a demand area, which means we should get a nice move a little boomerang move before the end of the day. So that's the plan. That is the plan with the Euro pound. We're just going to get that little boomerang move and we'll be done. I may have to recap like later in the telegram. So make sure you guys are on the telegram channel. Um, for those of you that are not on it, let me grab the link to the telegram. Most of you are in there, I think, but let me put this in the chat box. Oh, and sorry, I didn't answer your question, Joe, or your comment there. Um, yeah, you've heard that before about trading fewer pairs. Just trade one to three pairs. Yep, that's that's right. Yeah, that, that's from most of the people that I trade with that that are pretty good. They're like, Steve, you really should just focus on a couple of pairs. I'm like, I know I should, right? And I guess I'm finally taking action. Like, I'm just going to focus on that. 
when I'm trading the banker's close, I'm still going to be trading the, you know, the euro pound, euro franc or pound franc. Those are my three pairs for that trade, that specific trade. We have those three pairs and that's fine. It's a different strategy, but when I'm looking for supply demand for overnight trades, for trades that we're going to hold over the weekend or whatever, I'm just going to focus on the euro dollar and dollar yen. And just like, like you mentioned, look for um, good zones on those, on those few pairs. So, but yeah, um, just waiting euro pounds, just being slow. It's fine. I've said that so many times. This is a good area right here. We really should see something. It hasn't tapped into this area yet. So hey Joe, I have to postpone that webinar. I might try to put it to Monday instead. I, I have an appointment this afternoon. Um I think I can put it for Monday at the same time as it's scheduled for today. So 1 p.m. your time. Um, I think I can postpone it till Monday, but I just had some stuff that I forgot that I had some appointments this afternoon with some people. So, okay. So yeah, hopefully Monday works. Um, we usually will do it on Friday, but, um, and for those that are curious what that is, it's just a basic training. So for, for new traders specifically, it's really nice because it, when I'm trading live in front of you guys, sometimes it might be kind of confusing. Like you're like, well, I don't know what this is, Steve. So it's kind of nice to come to a place where we're breaking down the basics. Like what is support? What is resistance? You know, what is, how to identify a candlestick and what a candlestick is trying to tell you. Um, really basic stuff. Yep. I do one-on-one -on -one trainings. Um, I have a, um, I charge, it's, it's really generous. Like I charge 195 a month for all the signals and for, um, all of the, uh, live and recorded webinars, including the live trading webinars, which is awesome. And then it comes with a one-on-one -on -one once a month. That's, that's an hour long and it's recorded so I send you the recording after the afterwards, so you can have that for your records, which is really nice. Yep. So, I, yep, I do one-on-ones. Absolutely. All right, guys. So at this point, let's recap. So we're just going to leave. Oh, this is so cool, guys. Look at that Euro dollar. Three grand overnight. Three grand in one night, guys. <laughs> Love that. I did have some losers, so just to be fair, but I also have some trades that are about ready to just lift off, including the euro dollar. It's not even done yet. And that's what's so cool, too, guys, is like when I was a new trader, if I ever had a trade that was remotely up three grand. Do you know what I would do to that trade when I was brand new? I would close that trade and take my money, right? <laughs> and that's not always a bad idea, but I would do it without reason, right? But since we have a purpose behind this trade, since we know that this trade has more to go, we're not as a supply demand area yet, like this, this trade absolutely has more to the upside to go. Like we know that. Isn't that cool to be able to say, I know or not that, not that you know what the market's going to do, but you know that you have a plan on how to execute and that you're going to fulfill that plan, right? Like I, I can feel comfortable saying, yep, I'm going to keep this trade. I'm going to let it ride. Um, you know, I've got another 60 pips to go on this trade and then I'm done. That's a really cool feeling. Uh, not a lot of people can say that they have that kind of confidence. So, so. Um, okay. And then, yeah, it, it's always kind of a bummer, um, to, to leave the bankers close trade on the negative before we go, this is, you know, I'm down 10 pips on each trade. Um, but 
you know, it's going to turn before the end of the day or it should. So just, you know, you'll get that update from me um, later this morning or later this afternoon. So be ready for that. Um, and then we'll get out of this banker's closed trade. So, but anyway, guys, I think I'm going to wrap up with that. Um, it's a good day, a little bit of a rougher week, but still a good week, I guess. Right. Um, it was nice to be able to end with some really good wins on Friday today and looking forward to carrying some of these wins into next week and just having a absolute killer next week. That's my hope and my plan. Um, again, you'll get an update from me before the end of the day. So watch out for that on telegram. Um, I really appreciate your attendance today, guys. Thanks for coming. Also, for those of you that are watching the recorded webinar of this, if you ever want to come to these live trading classes, if you want to come and take these trades live and know which bankers close trade we're taking and get this kind of instruction in the live class where you can take these trades, um, there's a link in the description below where you can start your 14 day free trial. Um, that is valid. You can go ahead and click that um, down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe and like the video if this is something that you enjoyed. So anyway, guys, thanks so much. Thanks for coming. Have a fantastic weekend and we'll see you on Monday.